My name is Julie Maddox. We're here at the Maddox Prairie Farms. My role here is the land steward. I help to take care of it. I am the guest here. I moved here to East Texas in 1996 and I purchased this house on 1.2 acres. And it was surrounded by this uh, pasture. At the time there was um, mostly Bermuda grass, but there was some remnants of native grasses left. About three years later, the owner of that nice little pasture decided to reopen the dairy that was right next door to me that I thought had been permanently closed. And the flies became so bad we could no longer sit outside in the back. Didn't see the wildlife anymore. The snakes disappeared. The insects disappeared except for the flies. I could sell the place, but who's going to buy a place like this with 100 plus cows 30 feet from the bedroom door? Nobody. Or I can buy out the dairy. I contacted Texas Parks and Wildlife that year, and their biologist came out and said, yep, I think we can get you into the Pastures for Upland Birds program. After that, uh, we purchased the remaining acreage, and that also went into the program. Now have about 68 to 70 acres in the program. So of course we planted the seed and everything, and I'm so excited, I have this vision. You have this vision of the only thing that's gonna come up is what you planted. And that is exactly what did not happen. All these cool season stuff started coming up. But we saw also a lot of forbs. The actual, the wildlife started to return. I mean, this is the Pastures for Upland Birds program. It's to bring these grassland birds back, that, especially the ones that winter here. And we have a few like the dick sissels that nest here. They already came back. I mean, that's before I even have a tall grass prairie. So I was pretty happy about that. But over the first, the next two years, things didn't improve, they got worse. And it was because of all the cool season stuff, the rye got like way up here. And I thought, well, you know, I, I want this tall grass prairie to come back. And at that time is when I contacted John Stone uh, with the NRCS. And he, of course, came out and said, you can do this, it's really easy. All you're gonna do is make these little one, maybe two, maybe three acre pastures, move in 20, 30, maybe 40 head of cows. Let them eat that rye down and move them to the next pasture. Well, I thought about it and I got my poly wire and started making little pastures and I borrowed 13 cows. And they did a really good job, except they couldn't keep up with it. So I borrowed 13 more cows. Uh, I'm John Stone. Uh, I am with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. I'm a district conservationist in Wood County. Uh, and Quitman, Texas. And so I wanted to incorporate uh, a grazing specialist to come in here that could uh, really help her and we could fine tune this place and then take clippings and do all the things that, that need to be done to have a, a really detailed grazing plan that I knew Julie would use uh, out here. And so that's when I got Brandon out here just to, to be another brain walking around with us and he has uh, been great um, ever since. My name is Brandon Bean. I'm a grazing specialist with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Uh, so what we did is we came out and we clipped all of the various pastures. We weighed them to see what was the forage quantity out here so that we could best match the amount of cattle that she's wanting to run, her goals and objectives with the wildlife that she's wanting to enhance, and with the forage resource that she has here on the property. Cows came in, they did a great job, um, but it's time for the cows to leave. We only needed them here to eat the cool season grasses. But Parks and Wildlife had not seen the change that had occurred. So I called the biologist out, he came out and his jaw just absolutely dropped about the change that occurred with just bringing in the cattle. And uh, I, I decided to ask him, I said, you know, well, I know you want me to move all the cows out right now, but you think there's any chance you could go ahead and let me keep a few cows? and we can continue on with this. And he said, absolutely, as long as you continue to rotationally graze. And of course, that is what we've done. And the diversity that has just occurred is unbelievable. She's restored the ecology of what, what the savanna landscape is all about. The savanna was driven by fire. The savanna was driven by large ruminant herds moving across that landscape. Well, that's exactly what she's mimicking here on a small scale. The only issue she was having at the time was uh, her water source. So she was rotating the cows around her property and she was using temporary electric fence uh, and a temporary trough that she would drag to, to each paddock and with the water hose. And uh, of course that's pretty labor intensive and hot job here in the summertime. And so we came up with a, a plan to put in uh, some concrete water troughs around the property, some permanent water. Uh, along with a uh, pipeline, some heavy use area uh, around each trough. Uh, so she would have now waters strategically placed around the property that she could then 
fence off of and um, help her with that grazing system. So I was able to get uh, five 550 uh, gallon concrete water tanks and I purchased one extra one which is turning into a great asset especially now that we're kind of heading into a drought. My, ponds are get, my pond is getting dry. Um, I have plenty of places to water my cows. I do not need that pond. They also help me with the cross fencing. That helps me with my grazing, uh, rotational grazing on that too. I wouldn't be anywhere I am today without the NRCS, my mentors. What is good for the wildlife? I mean, I'm talking for bringing back the amphibians, the reptiles, the small mammals. What's good for them and for the birds? It's really good for the cows. Miss Maddox's uh, cattle are the best body condition cattle that I see on a regular basis, the best body condition they can be. I attribute that fully to the forage that she has. She has one of the most diverse pastures I've ever, I've ever been able to work on. Through bringing those cattle back to the landscape, she's seen a greater explosion of the grasses and the forbs that we want to see on the prairie because those cattle are doing more than just grazing. They're carrying seed all over the property. Through their hoof action, they're actually planting seeds with their feet as they walk across the property. The, the prairie needs the cattle just as the cattle need the prairie. There is something unique to the tall grass prairie or any prairie, even the short, mid, the mixed prairie, is that it has a sound. And it is the sound of those grasses rustling in the wind. It is the sound of all those insects that are out there. It's the birds singing. It's, it's a noisy, busy, diverse place.